I'd rather touch your face than to hear you on the line. But if you can't come back, could you please call some time? Hello, everybody. George Kenner. First, let's get some channel news out of the way. It's been a little while since I've done a review on a diode laser, and the reason for it is I went down to Melbourne, Florida, the Eon Laser, and I went through what they call the experience. They've purchased all of the major class one CO2 lasers and put them in the same place so that you, you can review those. That video is in edit right now. I'm gonna link the first in the series at the end of this. Enough of that. Let's get on to the longer Ray 10 watt. This is a phenomenal little machine. I really like it. Everything is relative within the price point and you want to make sure that you get the right tool for the job. This is not a bad tool at all. I'm gonna show somebody, one of my, my followers was writing to me and saying, what do you put on the bottom of this? This is just a piece of sheet metal. It happened to come with one of the other lasers that I reviewed along with a honeycomb table. But you wanna put something down on your table so that you don't burn it. They had suggested that they would just use clear glass. Well, a diode laser will go straight through the glass and could mar the tabletop. So you maybe wanna consider that. Now, this one has what I'll call an exposed belt rail system. It was very easy to put together with only one little glitch. Inside at this corner, there is a little grommet screw that turns sideways in the channel. I needed a pair of needle nose pliers to get that to spin in there and properly tension the belt. It really wasn't that hard, but it, I could see where it would be frustrating for somebody if maybe they weren't warned. The whole top gantry system comes pre-assembled. You take and very easily assemble these three rails in the front, slide this on, attach the back rails and the feet, and you're done. There's a video that shows the assembly process that will come, that comes along with the instructions, and it took, it's an 11 minute long video. Now, let's just say that that guy's not the first time he's put one of these together, so maybe it's gonna take you 20, 25 minutes to do it really um, at a pace that is, is realistic. So it's not really bad. Now, there are several reviews out there for this machine, and what I decided to do was, I avoided using the materials that they used. Whenever I see a review and they're all the same, and I'm only seeing the results on basswood, it, it leads me to wonder what else can be done. So on this particular machine, I took a piece of pine and I took a gray scale. And I burned this in to sort of get my markings and then I flipped it over and I took a name, I. I did it as a um, fill in just text. I did it as a fill going into the material and leaving the text pronounced, and then just a simple line. I was very impressed with the quality of this, and it was, it was something that was really very easy to do. You can get these burn samples from anybody or from almost any of the manufacturers for their machines and I suggest you do it because you'll have a guide for what your settings are for most of the materials that you're going to use. Now one of the reasons that I bought this and for all those woodworkers that are thinking about this which is exactly where I started because I wanted to be able to put a nice little signature on the pieces that I made. Here is a piece that I did and it is a combination of cherry and maple. So a nice hardwood. There's three passes that were done on this. There's no deviation in the lettering. This machine runs really very tightly. One of the things I do like about this machine, and if you're thinking about moving up to a CO2 laser, there's a control panel on the front. I would call this a great training device for entrance into the use of a Rowita controller that's on a CO2 machine. I wanted to make sure that, you know, one of the things that I always do is I, I try and go to cork. And one of the reasons that I'll use cork as a sample material is it's really pretty hard to engrave on to, to get it done properly. Now, this was one of the first that I did, and I'll call this overburn. 
I wanted to see what the strength of the laser was initially on cork and what it would be like. And I, I of course ruined that, but I learned about the laser, which is what you're really going to be doing with buying a, I'll call this, you know, just above an entry level machine. Then I, I went to this, uh, elephant which has really a lot of detail in it and it showed up and started to burn into the material and I'd lightened the speed or I'd increased the speed and lightened the strength of the laser. Now this is one that was done that is of the highest quality. You could commercially sell this very easily. It is a very de detailed and intricate piece meaning that the laser is not burning over or amplifying, um, creating a bunch of smoke. One of the things I really liked about this is there seems to be, although not a um, actual air system attached to the nozzle that'll push the smoke away, there is a fan and it seems as though there's like a downforce that comes from the fan and keeps the smoke constantly moving away. I believe it's a design tech a design feature, but I couldn't find it written down anywhere. There are some of the lasers in the 10 watt that do have a fan that cools not only the optics, but it is channeled down to get the smoke away from the surface. I, I wanted to see if I could do something and I took a JPEG of a little saying and I tried it on slate. Now it, you can see where it did it. This could very easily be my fault. If I had not done this as a JPEG with shadowing on it, it probably would have come out perfectly. I took and did the same thing on just a piece of cork with the same JPEG. And you can almost see, it looks like there's a little shadowing, um, but the black portion of the JPEG, the lettering came out much more pronounced. One of the reasons I say this is when you buy one of these machines, it is a learning device. There, this one, I did half of the tests on um, laser gerbil, and I did the other half of the test, including the gradient and this burn in light burn. Light burn is gonna cost you about another $60 for a diode laser, and laser gerbil is um, for free. So if you only wanna make the, this expenditure and you don't wanna learn the more complex laser um, cutting software, you can get started with this your, your cost and the free download of laser gerbil, gerbil, however you want to pronounce it, um, is more than acceptable. But most people that get involved in this, they want to learn light burn because you can take that skill and move it over into other lasering systems. So is this a buy? I'd say absolutely. Um, f cost for money, it, it, it is a tremendous value. I, I see nothing wrong with the machine. It went together very well. I believe this one's gonna get shipped off to um, somebody in Florida that uh, can really use this machine. It's about a 14 year old boy. I don't keep any of these machines. At this point in time, I don't even have a sponsorship with Longer. I don't even have an affiliate link. If at some point in time later I do get one, I will put it down in the description. But for everybody that sends me these machines, I keep one of the machines and one that I had purchased. So I, I'm just continuing on. I'm, I want to learn more about light burn and I'm getting set up to buy a CO2 laser. Make sure to go see that, that video series. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you for your time. I hope you subscribed. If you have any questions, of course, I answer all of my emails. That's one of the ways that my channel seems to be growing by leaps and bounds. I'm really surprised at the response that I'm getting from you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Well, if you can't come back, could you please call sometimes?